it's October and I'm in Victoria British Columbia Canada and we are actually having it pretty good it's a real mild fall so far and the predictions are that it's gonna be a really warm above average warm winter but in the past it's you got to contend with a lot of rain in British Columbia uh, the bees are very active still bringing in lots of pollen and some nectar There's some little robber right there yellow jacket see if I can get them mm. anyway uh, one of the things you should be concerning yourself with is for winterization and you need to think about ventilation of your hive moisture collection <laughs> almost got him damn hornet yellow jacket yeah ventilation feeding so internal feeding is best so I came up with a system for that and uh, and warmth insulation the bees do create a lot of condensation inside and you don't want that raining all back on them so I came up with this box which is a combination of ideas I call it the bistro because it's a it's kind of like a quilt box slash feeder box slash vent box uh, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a strange animal. I don't see anything else out there exactly like it. I'll take it apart here. There's my quilt. I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute. It's full of cedar shavings. A piece of burlap or, or hessian, as they call it in England. I made this little uh, ventilated shelf with a handle in the middle. And here you have two external feeders, which usually go at the at hive entrance there. But that promotes a lot of robbing, actually. And uh, you can't keep the yellow jackets away from it. I don't like that. So if you can internalize it, that'd be great. And also you could feed during the coldest part of the winter, too, because the heat will come up from the hive and keep these above freezing as well. And keep them at a, a, a I don't know an available temperature for nourishment for the bees. So here you have just a regular deep, six holes drilled, about one inch holes. These holes are all meshed over with one eighth inch mesh, which is sometimes hard to get, but you do need one eighth mesh or the bees will crawl through the, uh, the quarter inch stuff. Got six holes, one inch each, and they're drilled at a downward angle. So on the side of the box, you don't drill in just like this. You want to drill in at an angle like this so that any rain with wind will not migrate into the box. It'll still vent properly, but uh, rainwater won't get in. So we've got our two feeders. Should you choose to do that, use them. You can use them all summer, actually. See, this box works in the summer as well. And here's the bottom board with a regular B spacing underneath, about 5 sixteenths. And I drilled five holes, four of which are meshed over, and center for access to the feeder box. Now, important to mesh over these other four, um, it gives the bees something to attach propolis to. They will, they will cover over and adjust they will lay down propolis on these holes depending on what they want all right so they can adjust their own thermostat by adding or reducing propolis to the wire mesh as needed so if it's too airy in there and they're not getting enough heat retention they can cover it over and, and this is sort of well documented that they can actually seal right over this sort of thing and they can also remove it depending on the weather or environmental conditions or whatever. So you got this is here's just a standard Langstroth size. And yeah, it's like a shim board I guess. Piece of quarter inch plywood, birch. 
and yeah so that's my base put your box on add your feeders this way or that whichever you like mesh screen board it's just resting on four screws at the appropriate level and the distance up here is you probably have got about oh, what is that three and a half inches I guess and your standard hive top man lake top stainless steel cover and what I did do is I inserted a piece of this is a foam rigid insulation it's a one inch and you can get this at uh, like Lowe's you can buy actually little uh, 24 by 24 inch squares of it without any writing on it which looks a little better too for a reasonable price I think it was eight dollars for a square and I can get a couple out of that there you go to burlap now that'll absorb well, actually this will retain the heat puts one layer of uh, insulation down but that is still breathable and actually will suck in moisture and then above that is this quilt and all this is is uh, from Bed Bath & Beyond they sell these they're they're 18 by no 15 inches by 18 and two about two inches deep and they're for uh, washables uh, your your delicate washables in the in in your clothes washer so you put your bras in there and panties and <laughs> if you have such a thing and uh, keeps them from getting all mangled with the regular laundry but they're perfect for this because it's a very fine mesh it is completely breathable and what I've put in here is cedar chips cedar, cedar shavings and that can you can get I think uh, that's a lot better than the uh, pine pine shavings and bedding you see in pet stores for rabbits and other animals hamsters uh, because it will not rot this stuff will be good forever it will suck in moisture it will but at the same time because of the ventilation holes on the top it's going to uh, breathe and dry right back out and it'll last forever if you ever read eat there's it, cedar oil will not promote any kind of mold or rot and uh, and an added benefit, although this is at the top, but one of the benefits is it will sort of keep away uh, other insects like ants and uh, moths. Moths don't like cedar. Yes, I know it's at the top, but whatever. They still don't like it, and it won't harm the bees at all. They're doing just fine. And uh, you can make your own cedar shavings. Just get a planer. And uh, one of electric planers, if you have such a thing. And imagine if you're watching this, you already want to learn how to build your own sort of boxes. And, uh, yeah, just plain a, a cedar board or something and uh, collect the shavings and load it up. And one thing I did do is sifted it a little bit. I uh, threw a, a colander sifter, which has like two mil three millimeter squares in it. And that just gets rid of all the very fine particulate dust coming from the planing process and you don't want that filtering down in on top of the bees so this is very big shavings and they're all quite clean yeah. and you can leave this thing installed all year actually in the, in the summer to promote complete ventilation take off these to the quilt cover and the insulator and then just leave it mesh and of course I have a screen mesh bottom board on my hive as well and this will pro lots of nice good airflow through this bees don't really have a problem with cold especially in our temperate climates maybe back east in Ontario uh, Michigan you know in those places where it gets frigidly cold but it never really gets cold here for very long on the west coast so you have your, your biggest concern is moisture so this will let the moisture come out air lots of airflow and it'll dry out quickly and they'll love it and it keeps the uh, the food inside where only bees can uh, access it not going to get robbing 
And I call this the, this is a, the Bistro. Or the Beyonce board, I guess. How about that? Beyonce board? That's, that's good. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, if you can't find any cedar shavings, you can make them simply by yourself. Grab a piece of cedar. I just got a piece of scrap laying around from my construction. Take your hand planer. Before you know it, you got a bunch of shavings. Just gather them up. This, it's gonna be full of a lot of fine sawdust. So I take that and I put it through a colander and sift away. And then it'll all fall through and you'll just left with the bigger shavings on top. And what you collect, and you can get it there. Well, I can get a little lifetime supply here rather quickly for free. And it'll never rot. That's why they make cedar fences, they don't make cedar shakes, shingles, siding, decking. It just never rots. That's what you want. It'll always absorb moisture. You can always dry it out again, either with ventilation or just leave it in the sun. Here's a closer look at that quilt that I have, which is a, a wash bag from Bed Bath Beyond. And look at it, it's just perfect size. Fits in there, excellent. It's got a tight little zipper, with a snap cap, to keep it shut. Won't rain small little particles. It's way better than putting it, say, in a burlap bag alone. Burlap bags are good, but uh, this is better. And that just fits perfectly. And made to fit. Couldn't ask for more. And they're cheap. You get, you get two for like eight bucks. And uh, don't forget to use their coupon, which they always have. All right. Good luck. Really easy to make and totally worthwhile. And here's that uh, rigid insulation, one inch, from Lowe's Hardware Store. Yeah. Blue, the right size for your project. This one's uh, two feet by two feet. There's the UPC. Works great, and it doesn't have any ugly lettering on it, so it's great. Just cut that to the size of your inner box <coughs> lid, and or <coughs> sorry, your your lid on the outside, and bingo bango, you're done. Insulated, ready for winter.